Now you're good. I'm for me. Yeah, we're just waiting for a couple people to come okay. on. Okay. What are they doing? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay, we've got some okay. people. Okay, welcome everybody to Thursday Live, live from Amherst, Nova Scotia. Hookingrugs.com presents Thursday Live on Facebook and Instagram, Thursday, 2 p.m., Atlantic Standard Time, which is now. Now, I'll turn you over to our host. Well, why don't you show them how to hook, Robert? Well, I know how to hook. Because he's taught a lot of people how to hook. We had the, hook, the rug hooking business in our house for a while, nine years. Yeah. So when Deanne wasn't home and somebody would come along and wanted to learn to hook, I'd show them how to hook. So you've got to follow the lines first, just like you do with your crayons. <laughs> <laughs> so you put the strip of wool underneath and then... You go to a line, you find the, the wool on the end of your hook, and I don't know how I get myself into this stuff, and then you pull it up, you wiggle it around first, and it's so relaxing. I think it's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> it's so relaxing. So you pull up the end, and then you go and do it all over again, right next to it. You skip a hole. That's the main problem if you don't <laughs> miss the holes. And you pull it up again. Oh. And make a loop out of it. I'm through. <laughs> Thanks everybody. Well we used to say that anybody could do it, but I don't know. I can Come do on, it. you can do it. Well you're way far over there. Try it down here. Alright. I think you can do it, Robert, because you've taught tons of people. I've taught people. Mm -hmm. I haven't is there anybody out there that I taught there's one lady I taught a couple of weeks ago. I'm, I'm not good on depression. <laughs> I could tell you what the girl told me yesterday. What did the woman tell you yesterday? Well, we caught her stealing. Out and she <gasps> Never mind. Oh, I don't want to know. No. She wasn't admitting to be deep very easily. Never mind. Focus on your hooking. <laughs> she called me. Don't don't say that, please. Don't don't bother. He's cut off. <laughs> there he goes. Now he's hooking, though. He's not thinking about it, and he's hooking, right? It's relaxing. Well, I've been reliving what she said. Don't stop it, please. And then she told him. <laughs> okay, so we got to hustle him out of here. Thank you, Robert. You want me to tell you what else she no, said? No, <laughs> no. Go. God bless you. See you. Oh. She said she wasn't Robert! Robert. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got a handful there, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> he is a handful. So I'm going to get my book and tell you what we're going to talk about today. Because I do have a book. And I have it right here all laid out for myself. And today we're going to talk about... Oh, we're going to talk about the Create Beauty Every Day tunic and the t-shirt. That's what's new on the website. And I want to show you a little bit about the foreground in my new rug and how I'm going to make those bushes bushy. Um, I want to show you the stool. Now, I have to be honest, this stool, so I was walking down Regent Street and, uh, no, Rupert Street, and I was outside a place that my son was going to be moving into. And outside it was a stool. So this was the stool I showed you a few weeks ago, and Kathy painted it all black, and she took off. Kathy McDonald did all of this. So what we did was we had an antique stool, and she just kept the springs, and Kathy took everything off, and she said she was really glad she was wearing her mask when she took all that stuff off because it was dusty and messy, and then she covered it with linen, nice piece of linen, and she staple gunned it down, and then we took sheep's wool, natural sheep's wool. Like, I could sit on this now, I think. It's pretty sturdy. Let's hope it doesn't break. No? Uh, yeah, it's a great little stool. And she took natural sheep's wool, and then she co we covered it with wool. So now what I'm going to do today, or next week, I'm not sure. It just depends on how things go, is I want to hook something. And then my son came in one day, and he said, that would make a nice housewarming gift, but we want to paint it black. So, because he's moving in there. So I'm going to hook something on the top of it, but I don't know what yet. I have to decide... 
you guys can give me ideas about what would be fun on top of that stool if you want. It could be like hit and miss or something, but I feel like that's not their vibe. They have kind of a modern, I think they're going to go for kind of a modern look in their house. So uh, if you guys want to mention things that you think, so if it was a modern vibe, what would you put on that? And I could look through like the cabinet of natural curiosities here and have a look and see what, like maybe a simple plant or a tree that sort of goes off that would look I could see that I could see that or maybe like a piece of coral or something anyway uh, how big do you think of the stool the stool I'd say let's measure but I think it's about my guess is looking at that I'm thinking it is 14 by 14 so I'm going to cut a piece of linen yeah uh, it's 14 and a half by 14 and three quarters because it's old right so so I'm probably gonna hook something and then I have to I have to give it a little bit more I'm gonna have to give it a little bit more space right because it bends over so like what I'll do is I'll take the linen just grab a piece of linen here it's not big enough so what I'll do is I'll take the linen and figure out what I, and I need some space to go around the edge. So what I'll do is I'll cut it and hook right to the edge. So I'll probably just trace it out here. One like that. And I think it'll end up being well, right off the bat, I can tell you that's going to be more than 14 inches because of the the space. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, about 15 and a half inches I'll have to make it. Like if I make it 15 and a half by 15 and a half, it should work. And then leave some linen and then we'll staple gun it down the side. And I'll have to get some nice thick, I want to get some really nice thick cording to put around there. Or I could just take a piece of wool and put it all around there. So I'm going to be working on that over the next few weeks. I should leave that out. I might have a scrap out there that's a better size. Now, today, so that's my stool. I wanted to show you my stool because I'm working on my stool. And um, I want to talk about the foreground for the new rug. And I want to announce the winner, who is Christine Burgess Hills. Christine, if you're out there, or if you get to watch this, if not, Angela, you're going to send her an email. Mm -hmm. She won a wool box just for being on our newsletter list. So we're going to send her a brand new wool box, special one. I don't know if it's this month or next, last month or next month, but she's going to get one. And I'm going to pull that out. And I got to bring in some color here. Now, these are some new bouquets. We have some just our boo, if you look at our boo and our boo clay yarns, I'm just gonna pull this up. And like any boo clay would do here. But I'm gonna put a really bright green in here on some of this. So let's get this going here. Just kinda of want, and I've got it doubled over here. But when you're wanting texture in the foreground, that's why we've gone into so much boucle yarn because it's really great in landscapes. So we have boucle in many different colors. So I'm just going to put some in here all around. So this is my list of questions. So do you guys have any suggestions as to what you think I should put on there? I have an abstract and a geometric shape. Oh, an abstract or geometric. I agree. They're both great for a stool. You don't want an image on there, I don't think, because you're going to be looking at it from all angles. It's kind of a nuisance. Did you have anything, Ange, from our Facebook group? A lot of abstracts, geometric. Yeah. Or somebody mentioned a fern. A fern. Cool. Uh, yeah, I could see a fern like a plant would work too. All right, so I've got an email from Angela Wheeland, and she had questions for you guys. So I think that's great. People, like, people are asking questions. So I've got to check this off so that I don't ask it again next week because i am I got a mind like a sieve. Um, and so 
I found this interesting. <laughs> She's got great questions. I don't know which one to ask first. Thank you, Angela. I love these questions. And she said, if you could only eat one food for the rest of your life, what would you choose? That's a good question. If you could only eat one food for the rest of your life, what would you choose? What would you choose, Lorna? No idea. Oh, I know. You'd struggle. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't have a clue. What about you, Angela? Uh, butter chicken, extra spicy. <gasps> Got it. One food, one food for the rest of your life, folks. What would you choose? Sherry saying pizza. Pizza. Paula said cornbread. <laughs> oh, cornbread! Wow. Gary Thompson said bread. Well, bread probably be would be in the top five. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. Kathy Firth, chocolate. <gasps> chocolate. You'd live on chocolate, Kathy. Good. I can see that. Carol Cooper, peanut butter. Peanut butter. That's a good one. A little protein, I guess, isn't it? Peanut mm -hmm. butter. Now I'm going to bring in another green here. What about you, Deanne? But what about me? I think it'd have to be cheese. Somebody else mentioned cheese on Yeah, there. I think it would have to be cheese. I, I like cheese a lot, but then there's that other thing about cheese. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not when you think about it. Oh. You said potatoes. I that that would be you know high on my list. Yeah, it would be high on mine yeah. too, especially if there was like some leftover ketchup in the wood somewhere. <laughs> artichokes. Oh really? Now that's unusual. I've never had an artichoke. Oh. I don't even know what it is. <laughs> They're good. I have a great recipe from Half Baked Harvest for artichoke. Now see, I don't like. Look at that. See, this is a great example of color, folks. I have this wine and this green, and I put this other green in. It's a gorgeous green. It's from our new collection, the rebooting collection, the Alice and Annie collection, but it is not working here. It does not belong. I need some gold or something. Like that was just, it just is a great example of things going wrong. Okay, so I'm going to take this green. No, I don't know what I'm doing here today. Grapes in the form of wine. There you go, Angela. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. This is not on the website yet, but it's in. It's coming out in this month's wool box. Um, so I'm not. I can't tell you that you can order it, but it's gorgeous. It just came in today, and the only way you can get it, I don't know, is there room in wool box, Lorna? I do have room in wool box. Okay, it is if you sign up for wool box right now. So we might have a few left over after wool box that we'll put on the website, but, and I'm not just doing that to tease you. I just decided that that's what I need here. I'm going to take that, and I'm going to do my foreground. When I do these kinds of rugs, you can see my water here. So what I did with the water was I made all my shapes, like, sort of towards the point, you know, going in. Um, and, and I made it in whites and light grays and whatever. And now I just want something, I want something along the foreground here that will keep the focus on the bushes and the water. And so I need something subtle and soft, but that, that has a bit of color in it. So I'm going to just hook away on this. So what else were people going to, if they could only have one food? All your life. Like sour cream and Pringles. Sour cream and Pringles. Now it's onion Pringles. Onion Pringles and sour cream and onion Pringles. You know, chips would be up there too. Yeah. Really. I mean, really. Um, Francis is asking how Woolbox works since you just mentioned it. Uh, Woolbox works like this. You join. You can join monthly or you can join quarterly. And so say if you join now, then you'll get your first Woolbox will come the first of the following month. So what's this month? October. So we'll send out October's Woolbox goes out the first of November. And uh, it's $99 a month. And we send you, it has usually uh, a selection of, sw we have a picture, an image. And uh, we create, we curate a box based on that image. And it's usually a picture that I took or someone I know took and something so that I find beautiful. And so this month it is of some bushes and uh, a field, which I always find beautiful. And 
this is one of the colors in it. So it is. So what we're excited about here, I'd say, so it is a great club and you can, you join and you can cancel anytime you want. You can join for one month or two months. Uh, it is just, a recurring. It is a recurring charge. So you get it, you can join quarterly and you'll get it four times a year or you can join monthly and you'll get it um, every month. It's up to you. And some people join for a year. Some people join for six months. Some people have been in it since the beginning of the club. So. And where do people find the tunics and are they true to size, Deanne? Um, I'm wearing an extra large. Now I'm about a 12 or 14 generally. I wear like if this, I, I usually wear a large, but in this tunic and that's, and I'm wearing it fairly fitted because I like to wear, I got myself a new jacket. So I like to wear it under my jacket, right? And it looks great. I love like a long tunic. So we have them up to 2X, isn't Angela, or 3X? I think 3X. 3X. So we, we have them. So if you're like a 16, I would order a double X or maybe even the triple X. But so that's how I like to wear it. It's comfortable and it's, it's soft. And the, the tunics are made in Canada. The T-shirts are from a Canadian company, but we couldn't get the ones made in Canada. So we'll hopefully, um, the next time we do the t-shirts, we'll be able, we're hoping, we're working with a company in Quebec for these. And uh, it's a company that we've worked with before uh, with 30 Church. So um, so hopefully we'll be able to get the t-shirts made in Canada too. But the tunic is made in Canada by a Quebec company. And they're under gifts on the website? They're under gifts on the website, yeah. So yeah, I think, is it true to size? Well, I often wear an extra large in a t-shirt. So it's fairly true to size, but I would say, uh, I don't know. I kind of feel like this is running a little small. Wouldn't you say? I didn't, I didn't try one. You didn't try one on. What size did you get Angela in the t-shirt? I got a small. And you're, then that's true to size for you. Yep. You would always get a small, would you? Yep. Did you get the t-shirt or the tunic? The t-shirt. The t-shirt. Yeah. And I'm wearing my ring today, my create beauty everyday ring. Someone asked me if. I, they noticed I wasn't wearing my wedding ring. I'd just taken it off because it was really tight. Someone emailed me last week. I think they were worried <laughs> about me. But everything is good, as you can see. Might be after today. It might be. <laughs> I tell you, I have my hands full. Don't I, Lorna? Lorna knows. I have my hands full. And you would think it's the... Would you not think it's the other way around? Oh, everyone thinks Rob is so soft-spoken and so, <laughs> so easygoing. Yeah. 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 He's lovely, but he's oh, not yeah. easygoing. Yeah. No. No. I wouldn't say. Anyway, that's the mind of his own. Yeah, definitely. So you know what that's like. Probably lots of you have marriages like that, where you both have minds of your own, and it's sometimes a little interesting. Let's say that, like today. I was like, "What's he gonna say?" Gosh. Okay. Oh, see, that looks really nice. Just one color. I love it when you just have to hook one color for a while. So this is a merino stream that I'm using here. We don't really have a name for it. I would say it's brush, scrub and brush. It's such a pretty hat. Yeah, Lauren is thinking about, yeah, she's thinking about a hat out of it. And I think it would make such a pretty hat. So, I just want to talk about what rug hooking brings to people. Because what do I say all the time, you guys? What do I say? What do I say about rug hooking? What does it bring to people? Let's list the things. You tell us. What does rug hooking bring to people? Community. community. It brings community. Look at us now. We're together as a community and we're interested in getting to know each other. We know what foods we can't live without. You know? brings community. What else does rug hooking bring? I can wait. Everybody's saying community. Community. It brings community. And with community comes friendship. Peace, calm, meditation. Peace, calm, meditation, it definitely brings those things. Freedom, satisfaction. Freedom, satisfaction. Peace. Peace. Connection with our history. Connection with our history and tradition. Joy and calm. Joy. Joy and calm. These are great things. 
so when you share rug hooking with people, you're sharing all those things. And someone came in here in the last few weeks and they said, you know, when you say that in on the Thursday live, it really is true because it brought me those things. And, you know, like we could have a real business here without a place to go. But I think it's so important that we have the studio and that we give people a place to go. And I'm so happy that we do. And most of you now, when you come in, you tell us that you found us on through, you know, you, you found us here and that you, you connected with us here. And that's so, so important to us that, that you're watching and that you're sharing the videos and that, you know, I bet, do you think there were 500 new rug hookers last year? Oh yeah. 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 I think so too yeah. easily. Right. And I, and I just think that what that means for people, like when you find a hobby that satisfies you and makes you happy and makes you feel supported, makes you feel part of a community, how does that, that can change your life. Right. And I, it sounds silly, like one stitch that can change your life. But I think, I think it can, and I think it can make such a big difference. Um, I'm reading an interesting book now and it's, um, it, it talks about five minutes a day. Like if you do something for five minutes a day, uh, Chatterjee is the man's name. And it's the five minute health. He talks about five minute health snacks. And if you do something and it reminded me of our 10 minute a day challenge that we had this summer and that April uh, DeConnick started with rug hooking many years ago. And I think like there's so much truth in, in like you can do something for 10 minutes a day or five minutes a day. So I've started doing five minutes of yoga a day just to stretch out my muscles a little bit. And, um, and you know, one of the ways that uh, Dr. Chatterjee, he's a British doctor, one of the ways that he explained it was that if you did something really unhealthy with yourself for five minutes a day, like if you drank really high full sugar soda for five minutes a day straight, cumulatively, you'd notice how that made you feel. You'd know that I don't, oh, I, you know, my teeth, your teeth start to feel yucky. Uh, you feel your sugars are a little off. You just don't feel like yourself. But he said, we question whether or not five minutes a day of something really good for us, like five minutes a day of rug hooking or 10 minutes a day of rug hooking or five minutes a day of stretching or five, a five minute walk. We question whether that would be good for us when, a, when we know, of course it will be. So I think whatever you can commit to rug hooking every day or whatever you can commit to a healthy snack every day uh, and, and as a snack, he's referring to like little health snacks. He gives exercises for breathing or exercises for um, uh, uh, being in nature, all, all different kinds. If you add like five minutes a day of something good to your life, then you're just adding good to your life. And I love that principle. I think it's a beautiful principle and a great idea. I, mean, I love that boucle, but I don't think I got the right color. What do you guys think? Can you see how that's like not working? Love the color. Color's perfect, gorgeous, but it's just not perfect there. So I gotta really rethink what I'm gonna do here. And see, they're not working together. So I'm just gonna pull that out. I'm gonna save it because it's so nice. I wanna use it somewhere else. I may use it over in the hill, like gra like a nice grassy field. But I think here I wanna keep it like, I think I might want some pale yellow. I just want to say, Robin said your videos have opened up a whole new avenue for new artists. Aww. The silver lining of COVID. Thank you. It is. Thank you. Yeah, I'm glad. Robin, I appreciate your comment. Thank you very much. I, I know, like, I've known for a long time that looking after yourself is important. But I think we forget about the different ways that we can look after ourselves. It's not only healthy eating, it's not only exercise, it's, it's doing things that are so, uh, that are soulful, you know? And I just want to read you a letter from Brenda. This was a beautiful little note from Brenda. Several months ago, I heard and felt, and I read these letters because this is our community, right? These are the people that, uh, these are the people that are watching and these are the people that, and, are, are, are doing things. So she's just finished another design 
of, of mine, she said. And she said, several months ago, I heard and felt that I needed to learn rug hooking for some reason. No idea why. I searched the internet and discovered you amongst others. I ordered first your dancing lady and finished that one quickly and made it into a pillow that resides on our bed. We love it, as do our granddaughters. They love to look at her. I love it that our granddaughters love it. I've been healing from family trauma that I am finally facing uh, that has been so difficult, and rug hooking has been part of the healing as well as returning to some sewing. It has been a drive in me as I heal and face some things, and my dear husband supports me incredibly. My 86-year-old mother two months ago called us in the middle of the night, literally passing on from a heart attack on the phone with us. We are in Washington State and she is in Pennsylvania. It was so frightening, a continent away. I called her retirement community people and my sister who lives nearby. They rushed her to hospital and ultimately she went into risky heart surgery to try and save her life, which so far looks promising. I wanted to make her a, a, a hooked pillow after this experience. I chose the autumn pillow from you. She loves those colors. The hooking went fabulously and smoothly, and I was emotional as I finished it while my mom recovered. As I started to turn it into a pillow, the ending was so difficult. It almost seemed impossible and so frustrating and emotional for a while. And this mirrored my relationship with my mom. The last corners almost killed me, and I kept going with some tears as I had with my, whole, with my mom my whole life. I'm a truth teller. She's an avoider of anything difficult and in denial. We were at odds many times until very recent years. These year, last years, all that has started to heal. And for me to be able to send her this pillow along with two sewn complimentary pillows, no words. I'm looking forward to hearing and seeing my mom's response when she receives her surprise package next week. Thank you for existing. Warm regards. And that was from Brenda. So, you know, that's, there's no reason. that That is just... I don't have to tell you anything else. That's I'd why like I to see. It. I'd like to know her mother's reaction. Ah, I'd love mm -hmm. to know. Yeah. So, Brenda, if you are watching, we would love to know what your mother thinks of those pillows that you sew that you sewed and hoped for. That would be really nice. So, I just really want you to know that that the that the way you spend your time is so important, and that it can make such an incredible difference in your life. Just making time to make. So I finished my new book. Uh, it's gone to the printer as far as I know. And it, it'll be out in, and it's all about making. It's not just about hooking. It's about making. I'm going to finish this little area up here. And then I'm going to show you something. So I'm hoping it'll be here even before November, but I don't really know. Okay, so sometimes I think, should we make this show fancier or finer or do, you know, make it, should we be interviewing people? But really, and we will sometimes bring people in for special guests. Like today, we had a very special guest, and I mean that. He is a very special guest. Um, but really, mostly, I just want to come hook with you for half an hour, and that's kind of, I don't think I want to get too fancy. Don't want to get too slick. Just Paula be, says no. What? Paula says no. No. We just want to be ourselves, right? That's what that's what rug cookers are. We're just people being ourselves. So, rebooting tradition is on, and it's going to be great. Um, I'm going to sit over here, and I'm going to talk to you about it. So, rebooting tradition is about making rugs for the floor and using strong wools uh, that last on the floor. So two ply, three ply, four ply, whatever, or wool cloth, all good. Now, it starts on October 18th, and it's right now it's $1.99, and you can still join. We have uh, another two weeks that you can join, and after, after, this, after that, it's going up to $2.59, and we're going to leave it on the website. This is our collection. It's called the Alice and Emma Collection. And so Alice and Emma are two people I have never met, but they're both rug hookers. One is my mother's mother and one is my father's mother. My mother's mother was Alice Ganny. My, my father's mother was Emma Wakeham. And it's interesting, though I never met these women, I heard a lot of stories about them growing up from my own parents. And 
and um, I decided that it made perfect sense to name the collection after them because they are what led me to rug hooking, really. The fact that they did it and that my sister, my oldest sister, wanted rugs for her farmhouse floor. And she was, the first time I saw like a hooked rug on a farmhouse floor was at her house. And when I got my own farmhouse, I wanted rugs for my floor. And that's what got me started in rug hooking. So I just want to show you some of the colors. I call this color haze green because that was my grandmother. And then we have uh, the rusty red. We have a deep berry color. So what we've done here with this collection is some are hand dyed and some we had custom dyed for us. We've got the gorgeous blue and we've got a great black that goes to gray. Then we've got another one called milkweed. And we've got this old gold, which is a really strong old gold, Emma's house gold. And then this green is called mountain green. So these are the colors that are in the Alice and Emma Heritage Collection. Now, whether or not you join the course or not, these colors are great for floor mats. This black is like an ant it's an antique black. And they only come, uh, they come as a collection or individually, Angela. You can get yes. them either way. Yep. Yeah. So these are our, these are, and they're all in three ply, uh, pretty much. I think they're all in three ply. Some were in, for the kits, we're using two ply, three ply, and four ply. We're using a mixture because, of course, two ply is just two two plies is the same as a four ply right so this is our collection and i would encourage you to think about if you haven't already signed up for the rebooting tradition collection join us um it's it's about 30 videos i suppose is it and i go over three different rugs in there and i design five and then i design a series of borders so it's a course that kind of combines designing color uh and hooking traditions and history. I interview a lot of interesting people and I connect you to really good, I've, I've created a series of links that you'll get in that course that really tell you a lot about the history of uh, rug hooking in Atlantic Canada, which is one of the areas where rug hooking originated. So um, that's my story for today. But I think, can you show them Lorna's outfit today? Because she looks I know. gorgeous. Look at that, all that pale pink and those taupe, the taupe shoes. I love it. You're welcome, Lorna. You do stuff to me all the time to put me on the spot. I love her outfit today. And she came in, I was like, oh, gosh, she looks good. Anyway. Um, I just want to tell you, though, uh, Robin said, please know, Deanne, that hooking is much more than wool and burlap because you are taking us on a journey with the craft. Ah, really that's nice. good. That is really nice. I think hooking is much more than wool and burlap and yarn and all of that stuff. It's really about what we do with ourselves and our, our own creativity, and we can do it in a lot of different ways. And some people just like to use found materials. I totally get that. Some people like to use recycled clothing. I did that at first. I'm just not able to do it anymore because uh, we can't find recycled wool anymore here. It's really, really hard to find. So, uh, But it is, it is a journey, and, and it's a creative journey. And all, all, I think all, all, all art is a journey. I'm making any kind of art. So now go try to think about that, you know, 10 minutes a day. Like, don't let that just be a summer thing. And when you commit to 10 minutes a day, you know, one of the things you can do while you're hooking is you can do your breathing exercises, right? You can even do a little yoga sometimes. Do a little stretching in between, like, in your five minutes. Stand up and give yourself a stretch and just really commit this week. What I would like to say to you this week is commit to taking care of yourself and use your rug hooking as part of that of, of the method that you use to take care of yourself. Because when you take care of yourself, you can take care of others. So don't make it all, we're not making it all about ourselves. We just know that when we take care of ourselves, we can take care of others. We've got more to give. God bless everybody. Thank you for watching. I'm so glad you're there, and I'm so lucky to have you. And I mean that. See ya.